Hi, my name's Clint with the South Dakota Game Fishing Parks. And today we're out setting a couple of trail cameras. Wanted to show you a couple of things on setting cameras and why we do it. It can be a lot of fun. It's almost a season in itself where you can go out and learn a lot about the animals that you're chasing in the fall or just know what's going on around your house. And so here we picked a little spot where uh, we've got turkey season coming up. So we want to see if there's any turkeys. I uh, also want to know if there's any deer here. We can leave this camera out for quite some time, so we'll be able to see a variety of changes over time. So I'll learn a lot about animal behavior, animal movements. Uh, we'll learn about uh, kind of just really what visits the area occasionally. And then even if I wanted to, I could set this on a trap and learn a, a lot about how that animal reacts to my trap and my bait and see if I'm missing things. So a lot can be learned from trail cameras. It'd be kind of fun to see those things moving through at night or those time of day when you're not there. Trail cameras vary in sizes and capabilities. Some of the older ones you're gonna find have a typical old school flash, use big D batteries, not as quick, uh, very big and bulky. Not gonna find these in stores anymore, but you might find them uh, used from someone else or uh, garage sales, that sort of thing. So this is kind of the older style, gotten a lot more advanced. Uh, these typical basic cameras literally will just take some motion and set that camera off. You can get some really cheap ones down to even $25, $30 that will do the trick, but have some issues in its capabilities. Other cameras in that $100 to $80 range-ish are gonna be uh, a really good quality. Start to use some LED lights to them, uh, quite a few megapixels, and use good AA batteries where you can put lithium batteries in there. The new thing that you're gonna see a lot of are cell cameras. Cell cameras are, are pretty neat where you can send pictures directly to your phone using whatever carrier you have with your cell phone. Uh, most of them require some sort of plan that you pay for. And this one, we, we just got the free trial to have 100 pictures, so we'll try setting that out today. One thing when you're at the store looking at a trail camera is just realize that they're all different. And the settings and the adjustments that you can make on the digital display here are gonna vary depending on the brand. So just dive into that instruction manual. You'll see things like the resolution. Uh, I suggest putting that as high as possible so you get really good pictures. If you're gonna leave it out there for a long, long, long time, maybe put it on a little lower so that you can, you're not gonna run your batteries out. Other things you're gonna see are delay on here. So after it takes a picture, how long before it takes another picture? When choosing a location for your camera, try and find trails uh, or areas like this. We found a little meadow where we have a bit of what's called a saddle. This is an area where you have a low point between two hill higher spots. That's a, a very common place for animals, animals to travel, uh, as well as this meadow. And I know there's turkeys really close by here, so I wanna see if they visit this little, little clearing. Uh, as well as I see lots of sign. There's there's deer droppings all over throughout this, this spot. So I think this could be a good area to see uh, what deer are in the area and then to see if these turkeys are moving through here. So I also could find uh, some spots that have good trails where they're gonna move. That's a very, very uh, good spot to put a trail camera. A water hole, a wallow for an elk wallow is a good option and then uh, diversify it, put them on ridge lines, put them at the, at the, on those trails or those meadows and try and put them in various spots to catch the different activity in the area. Putting one camera out is neat, but it doesn't always paint the picture of what's going on in the area. All right, so after searching around, I think I found the right tree. Not all trees are gonna work for putting your camera on. I do want one that's kind of straight up and down for this style of mounting, because there's multiple ways to mount your trail cameras. And this one, just straps right on with a typical old strap. Do realize that there's a lot of recreators in the hills, so putting a lock on, or sometimes they come in a box, it's really important to try and prevent tra uh, trail camera thieves. Uh, that, that does happen occasionally, um, so it's something we have to deal with, and try not to put these in a high traffic area where a lot of people are gonna be. So I'm gonna mount this thing actually a little higher than probably some people will, you can experiment with different heights on the tree, but I like it up a little higher so it's not catching any of the movement of the grass, which will set your camera off and give you some false pictures. And then I'm also looking out here, are there anything really close that it's gonna catch and set this camera off? Uh, anything 
on the tree here that's going to set the camera off. So those will set it off. I'll knock those down. Okay, strap this in right about there. And what I want to do is hit this thing at the point of which I really am, am focusing on getting a picture of where I think that animal is going to be. Now you can reference your camera's instruction manual. It'll tell you the range at how far out it'll capture. Uh, and that's going to be a big determinant how far out you're expecting to catch something. All right, so a couple of little tips when setting these is I like to put these, if I can, facing either north or south. Because as you go through in the beginning of the day and the end of the day, you get that rising sun and setting sun where you have that really low light. And that low light can trigger extra pictures and give you some bad exposure and not so not get what you want. So by putting north and south, we're, we're getting not that sun to, to set the camera off. Another little trick that I saw that has been a lifesaver is trying to line this thing up. So I use my phone. Instead of trying to line up where that's aiming, I turn my camera on on my phone and I set it over top of the camera to see exactly how that camera is seeing and I take a picture. Then I'll look at that picture and see what that camera will catch, capture and I'll try and if I need to move that up, I can move it up. I can take a stick, loosen it and shove that underneath something to get the better angle or shove it up there to get that better angle. Now, one of the big things that happens oftentimes is you walk away like, oh great, I got it all set and you walk away. So it's really important to turn the thing on. That happens all the time. You forget to turn it on or you forget something about how, to, how this thing works. So prior to setting this, I had tested it. I had made sure there's an SD card in it. You do wanna test your SD cards, they will go bad. Uh, and you change your battery, the date's gonna be wrong. So I know that's all on, I know how this camera works. It's gonna give me a little bit of time before it starts taking pictures. It's gonna blink at me and I might even walk away and test it. There's a motion sensor in a lot of these, or all of them, that you'll see a light light up when it hits you. So that's something that you can do to test it. All right, there's multiple ways that you can mount these trail cameras. There's screw-in mounts, which are really nice for trees that are not perfectly straight up and down, and you need to kind of get the angle that you're looking for. You can strap them straight to the tree. Or the other method that you'll find is an actual stake or stand that you stick in the ground. Works really well where there's a place you wanna find out what's going on, but there's no trees. Other things you can do is uh, put them right on a T-post on a fence, or uh, there, there's mounts and brackets and all sorts of things in the market that you can find to attach them in different ways. So we're gonna attach our cell camera, and this area we picked is a trail running straight through this area. Not a big meadow, so the only thing we're going to really capture in this area is anything walking on this trail. And, well, game trails are here for a reason because it's an area of heavy activity. So we're hoping to get something on this. Now, I do have my north in that direction and my south in that direction. So I'm going to kind of be facing a little northwest, but I think I'll be all right because there's a lot of trees here protecting uh, from that sun. So we're not going to get too many exposures that, that we don't want. So I think this will be a good area as that animal's walking down the trail, this camera is gonna have a lot of time to capture that. If I were to put it, this camera at a 90 degree with the trail, you can have something run along that trail and if your camera is not fast enough to pick up on it, you're not gonna capture it. So what I'm gonna do here is put this so it's catching a good chunk of the trail and if that animal's going this way or that way, we're gonna get them. All right, so one thing we've done here is set this up a little higher. And like I said with the other cameras, I like them a little high because I often set in places where there's elk. And cow elk often are very curious. They'll come over and sniff these things. I've even had them rip my antenna straight off. So you have to put them out of the way where they're not gonna rub on them, twist them, take them off the tree, because they will do that. They are curious animals. Another thing, if there's cattle in the area, that you're gonna get a lot of pictures of cows and probably not as many of, of deer, elk, or turkeys like you're, you're hoping for. So putting it up a little higher is, that, is the reason why I'm doing that, to avoid all of those what could happen while you're not here. So always, again, make sure you turn that on. Take your uh, mapping software and drop a waypoint wherever that, that trail camera is, because this spot 
exact tree might be hard to find again. So that's going to guide us back to this spot.